So what we're looking at now, we're going to look at probabilities. Sorry, we're going to look at Venn diagrams and how it can be used to calculate probabilities. Um, so we, we'll start off with an example. We need to, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll pick something like um, these two events or represents the event that it's raining. And then, of course, or dash would mean not raining. And C will represent the event that it's cold. And C dash would represent that it's not cold. So you can represent uh, this as a Venn diagram, like so. And the element is the probability. So you can have a number here, 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 and outside here. And let's explain what each one would mean. So this one here, the OR intersect C, that would represent the probability that it's both raining and it's cold. Okay. Um, what would, whoops, what would this number here represent? So, sorry, let me just put in, that's OR and that's C. Good, yeah. That's the probability that it's uh, cold, but not raining. So that's the cold, but uh, no rain. And then likewise, this one, is, you can just put the dash, yeah. Uh, this one here will be the probability that it's raining, but uh, not cold. Okay, and then this one here, probability that there's no rain and it's not cold. So this is not rain and not cold. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll pick an example now. So let, let's put in some numbers. So we can see, you know, maybe I'll put in here, uh, if you can see this, 0 0.2. And this is 0 0.3, and this is 0 0.1. We actually know what this number should be, because the total probability has to be 1. So this would be 0 0.4. So let me, let's do a, a question here. Say, I suppose I ask you, what's the probability that it's cold and not raining? So what would that be on the picture? So that would be cold, so that means we're here, but not raining. Yeah, 0 0.3, because this one is not in the, the rain set. Uh, we'll actually do a proper example now. I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea. Okay. So actually what I'll do as an example, which would be a good one, is uh, number one there in the book. I'll do this as an example, and then we'll have a look at a, a harder one. Can I scroll down? So, let's have a look here. So, the first one here, what's the probability of getting event A, whatever A is? So, have a look at the Venn diagram. What is that? 0 .5. No, not 0 0.5. 0 0.6. So, you have 2 inside A. Yeah? Okay, what's the probability of B? 0 .4. Good. What is the probability of A and B? 0 0.1. 0 0.1, okay. What's the probability of getting A, and this is the symbol for or. This is A or B. Because if you think about it, A or B means you don't care which one it is, which means you're including everything in A and B, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0 0.3. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. Okay, what's the next one? Probability of A and not B. So this means A happens and then B doesn't happen. So 0 0.5. That's the only one that's in A and not in B. Okay, the next one is B and not A. 0.3, good. 
And neither A nor B. Neither A. Now what symbol do I put in here? Union or intersection? Union. Does it matter? Oh, it does? Union. No. Uh, is it? Intersection. Intersection, yeah. It's and. Yeah. Because uh, union here would be quite different. This one is 0 0.1. Not A or not B. That's going to equal everything not in A, so that's 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1, and then not in B plus 0.5. That's Same 0 0.9. Thing. Same thing. No, 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 not the same thing. It couldn't be more opposite. Wait, wait, how does that make sense? I just calculated there. So if you look at the Venn diagram, yeah. Yeah, but if you look here at the picture, let me draw it here. Are you talking about the last one? Yeah, let me draw it here for you. There's um the... Venn diagram. Okay, so first one, what's not A? That and that. That's not A. True? Yeah. And now because it's union, you attach to it what's not in B. What's not in B? 0 0.5. 0 .5. 0 0.5, and we already have the 0 0.1 included. So it's this, this, and this added together. So that's point... Uh, did I leave something out? Hang on, hang on. Watch carefully. And if you think I made a mistake, tell me the moment I made it. So, not A. Not A is this and this. Agreed? Okay. Not B is 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. But we already have 0 0.1. We already have it. Yeah, but sir, think of it this way. When you're saying not A and not B, it's just one. Because yeah, the diagrams are not there. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. This adds up to 0.9, doesn't it? Yeah. So it can't add up to one. No, but because they're saying the probability of none of them being there, then it's just one. Because no, it's none of them. No. No, no. Think about this. Here's two events, okay? Here's two events. Event A is you uh, win the lottery. Yeah. And event B is you get an A star in maths. Would you say the probability of not winning the lottery and not getting an A star in maths is one? Guaranteed. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, I do appreciate that there is a language difficulty here. There is a language difficulty here. It can be quite hard to sometimes precisely pin down what you're trying to calculate. This is why it's important to practice lots of them. Yeah. You're trying, you're trying to think, is there someone that includes all of them? Yeah, well, here's an example, right? Probability of getting A or not A. Yeah, that's or. No, I never said that. Intersection is and. I said that several times. What's this one? A or not A? One. It's one. But let's write down the numbers. What's the A part here? It's if that's A and that's B, it's 0 0.6. And then uh, the not A is 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. So the total here is 1. But that's actually always true. Like if I said to you, what's the probability something will happen or will not happen? How could it be anything but 1? I mean, something will either happen or it will not happen. Exactly. You're guaranteed that that's going to be the case. Right? Yeah. You, know, you will either win the lottery or not win the lottery. 100% true. Always. The other way of winning the lottery. Yeah. Hmm? Actually. No. <laughs> then you don't win the lottery if you don't buy the ticket. So for the we don't win if, if you try, but it won't then you don't win the lottery. It doesn't matter how you don't win. You don't so win. For the probability questions, the universe is always wrong. 
Correct. Yeah, the universe is always one. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that just uh, listen. That's an important remark there. For the probability questions, the universe is always one. All possibilities add up to one. Always for these questions. Sir, yeah. We do number six it's very relevant. <laughs> okay. We'll do another example. We'll do number six. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do two, three, and six, and then that's plenty of examples. Okay, so I'll do number two next. A coin can either be heads or tails. So that's heads or not heads, right? The roll of a dice can either be a six or not a six. Draw the Venn diagrams of the probabilities of H and D. Okay, so um, there's H, there's D. Uh, now, well, tails just means not H. Okay? So what's happening here is um, a coin can either be heads or tails, and the roll of a dice can either be a six or not a six. Draw the Venn diagram of the probabilities of event uh, H and event D which means getting ahead and getting a six. Uh, so this one is a little bit tricky because you have to figure out what's in each of the four here. So let's just think about what that is. What number, what is the number representing here? It represents you getting the heads on the coin, but, but also not getting the six on the dice. Not quite. We'll get there in a moment. What's this number here representing? This one, what happens? You get the six, but not the heads. This one here? Heads and six. And this one here? Neither. Now, to calculate that, it's actually useful to go back to a previous lesson of the uh, probability tree. So you can have heads, uh, not heads. And then you can get your six, not get your six, get your six, not get your six. So the number here, what does that represent here? That is this guy here. So whatever number you get here, that is for heads and the, um, the six, which is a half times a sixth, which is which is a twelfth. Now we don't need to do any more with the probability trade because we have enough now. Because what's the probability of getting a heads? A half. So this here, this must total a half. So a half minus a twelfth is five twelfths. What's the total here of getting a six on a dice? A sixth. So it's a 6th minus a 12th, which is a 12th. And this one here? Um, well, the total has to be 1, doesn't it? 5, 6, 7, so 5 twelfths. Now, if you want to check that that's right, let's test it out. If I go back to the tree for the moment, what's the probability of not getting a heads? Half. Half. And not getting a 6th? A six. Six. No? 5 over 6. 5 over 6. If you multiply these together, what do you get? One, five, 5 twelves. Five, twelve, yeah. No heads and no 6. 5 twelves, which is exactly the number I wrote here. So what I want you to see is that you can actually kind of have a link between what you did with the probability trees and the Venn diagrams. What's slightly nicer about the Venn diagrams is that the Venn diagram doesn't care about the order. Whereas with the probability tree, you need to imagine that there's some order. Like first you flip the coin and then you roll the dice. But maybe you do both at the same time. The Venn diagram doesn't care which comes first, the, the, the coin or the dice. So the context, which do you use? You kind of use the probability trees when you have a sense of one event follows another event. And then you kind of use the Venn diagrams when you have a sense that both events could happen at the same time. Like, it could be raining and cold. You know, you don't think it rains and then you decide if it's cold or not. You know, so this is the context for which you pick. 
Uh, now that we have this drawn, you could answer questions like what's the probability of getting uh, heads and uh, uh, a six, a dice. So that's one twelfth. Uh, what's the probability of not getting heads but getting a, the six on the dice? One twelfth. One twelfth, good. And the probability of uh, not getting the six on the dice but getting the heads on the coin? Five twelfths. Okay, so what's nice about this diagram is you can answer all these questions by just looking at the diagram, okay? Uh, that was number two. So now let's go on to number three as another example. Okay. What's the D dash? What's the what? D dash not six. Do we D dash is not getting the six. It's... Um, yeah, what's the probability here of not getting the six? That would be ten twelfths, which is five sixths. Yeah. In an example, do we have to show the square, or could you just do a tree and then just copy it? You could do the tree, unless, of course, the question said to actually draw the Venn diagram. But for this particular question, if I said there's a coin and a dice, and I don't specify what to do, and I ask you for something like the probability of both, then you have two choices. You can either do the tree or the Venn diagram. If they said to use the Venn diagram, could you use the tree then copy it into the Venn diagram? Eventually, have to do that. So yes, that's fine. But I would just say in the exam to scratch out the tree after you've used it as rough work. To, you, you mean use the tree to help you draw yeah. the Venn diagram? Yeah, it's fine. Nice. Yeah, in that situation though, I would kind of draw the probability tree on my exam, like on a scrap piece of paper, mm -hmm. and then put the Venn diagram in the answer book. Because sometimes they can be very picky if they say use a Venn diagram, and they might punish you by deducting a mark if they see the tree. Even if you scratch it. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you scratch it out, no, no, because when something is scratched out, the examiner is not supposed to. You pretend as if you can't see it. It's been deleted by the student. So if you if you do it, just scratch it out. Like just just put a line through it. Or you, That's all. you can use that. Or use scrap paper. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, that's push instead of number three. Okay. All right. I'll do four then. Four and six. Okay. Four. Forty percent of homes have a pet dog. And 30% of homes have a pet cat. So what are the two events here? Dog and cat. So you can either have a dog, or you could have a, a cat, or of course you could have both, or of course you could have neither. So you could be outside. Right. Now, 40% have a pet dog. So where do I put the 40% here? Well, we don't know, because all we know is that the total here is 40 30 have a cat. Where do I put that? We don't know. 40% of homes have neither a cat nor uh, a dog. So, at, yeah, at least outside we know that this is 40. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. You can use percent. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, both fine. Yeah. 40 there. Ah, so we have a little bit of a problem because we know that the total here, what's the total for dog? We know that this totals up to 40 and this totals up to 30, but we don't quite know how to spread it, you know? It could be like this. It could be 0 0.4 and it could be 0 0.3, and nobody shares them. But we kind of see, well, that doesn't quite work because what's the total here? Doesn't that add up to one point? That's my point. The total is not one. So the way we tackle this type of problem is uh, we call this piece here X. And so, this must be 0 0.4 minus, minus x. x. And this must be 0 0.3 minus x. Yeah? And now, you know that the total must be 1. So, this plus this plus this plus this should equal... Yeah, so you've actually just made a linear equation. Should equal one. Yeah. 
What equals 0 0.6? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So that cancels that. Uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. And point, uh, 1.1, is it? So 1.1 minus x equals 1. So you get x equals 0 0.1. So now we have it figured out. This piece here must be 0 0.1 here. So what is this piece? 0 0.3. And this piece? 0 0.2. So my question is probably what's the probability? How many homes have cats and dogs, is it? Yeah. So the answer is 10% of homes have a cat and a dog. This question was on the medicine entry test for one of the universities. The exact same question with the cats and the dogs and the homes. Which one? Number three. Oh, goodness, fine, I'll do three. Okay, scroll down. Right, but I'm not, I'm not doing six now, because I, I have to leave you with something to think about. <laughs> well, what am I doing? Three. Okay. Uh, a, in a deck of cards, each card is either red or not red. So you're either red or not red. Um, and each card is either a suit or not a suit. Uh, it, uh, because it's a number card. Ace, two, three, four, ten. So in other words, um, I don't know if I, I... I don't think I have the right word. I don't think it should be suit. I think it should be royal or something. Anyways, what I meant was um, you have some cards which are jack... Queen, King, I call that S. And then not S are all the other ones. Ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So um, let's just think about, or let's just make that clear. Or means a red card, and S means a card which is a, a picture card, like a, a Jack, uh, a Queen, or a King. It's those three. Okay. I don't know, is that the right word? Is it suit? Face card. So I should change this to an F then. Yeah, you get the idea. Jack, Queen, King. Yeah. Oh, uh, a Ace I count as a not one of these. It's like the number one. Okay. I need to fix that. Can I have a pen for a second, actually? Let me just mark that to be fixed. Thank you. Uh, okay. Right. Let's fill this in. So, the tip here for these questions is always to try and get the middle done first. So in the last question, we tried to get the middle done first by calling it an X. In this case, we don't need to, because if we think about a deck of cards, we can work it out. Um, to make things easy, uh, I'll make these all fractions. They're all over 52. There's 52 cards. Okay. So the first thing we need to think about is, how many red cards are there which are uh, a picture card? No. No. Yeah. Six. Because you can have a Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts, and then yes, Jack of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, King of Diamonds. You have six. You do need to know your cards for maths class. You do. Um. How many red cards are there all together? 26. 26. And we've already accounted for six of them. So what goes here? 20. 20. 20. 
How many Jack Queen Kings are there? Twelve. 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 And we've already accounted for six of them. So right now, what am I on? Thirty-two? So what's here? Twenty. So my question is, uh, what was my question? Just draw the Venn diagram. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the Venn diagram. Yeah. Well, now it is, now that I've done it. <laughs> but remember at the start, I was having people telling me there were 12 and 26 when there actually was six, you know. Huh? Mm. I'll do it in the tutorial if you can't get it. But I think I've I've already done one, two, three, and four. I think it's good to let you s struggle over some of them. I've already done one, two, three, and four. There's only five to ten left. Um. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll let you try these for a few minutes. I think you can get them. You just might have to think a little bit about them. Amjad, come on. You've been sleeping for the last 10 minutes. Were you up late studying maths? 